Topic for today's uh, uh, discussion is actually how how the loyalty ecosystem in India has been changing over a period of time, and the role that uh, and the role that rewards uh, play in it. But before I actually go on to talk about how uh, the industry has been changing, it's actually wonderful to see how this event itself, which in some ways is a representative uh, form of the industry, how that's been changing. I've seen the uh, India Loyalty Conclave uh, over a few years now. And I can see how every year the quality of this program is changing, primarily from a content and the participants' perspective. So thank you so much for uh, uh, News Corp, VC Circle for putting together this wonderful event. And uh, today, uh, representative of the loyalty industry in India, we have a really, really wonderful panel with uh, uh, some of uh, some of the deepest loyalty expertise in India lying in these very efficient hands. So I'm going to request each one of them to do a quick round of introductions. Hi, morning. My name is Karthik, Karthik Jain. I head the marketing and customer analytics for HDFC Bank. Uh, just to talk a bit about the context of today's discussion, I mean, all of us are, uh, we often confuse loyalty with rewards, and Vijay's company's loyalty rewards. You know? So it's just loyalty isn't just rewards by itself. So uh, before, you know, just to give a quick uh, you know, a working definition of what uh, loyalty means to the bank and uh, also give a framework for you to look at it, uh, it's important to define loyalty for your organization. So the way we look at it is what is the uh, customer life cycle um, uh, and how do we manage that? And is that uh, ensuring that we have a larger wallet share of our customer? Does the customer make us the primary bank? And uh, you know, does, then, does it go only on to advocacy? So it's a critical for you to therefore define what the customer life cycle is for each of your businesses. For instance, for a bank, it could be right from customer acquisition to activation, then your know, channel activation, cross-sell, upsell, getting the families into the fold as well, and looking at attrition. So that's what we look at, and a lot of the work I do with my team is to look at data analytics and uh, very targeted customer marketing to drive that customer life cycle and I support the various teams in the bank uh, for achieving those objectives. Hi, um, this is Adnika. I head marketing for American Express um, for uh, both uh, retail consumers as well as our large uh, corporate businesses. So it's both B2C and B2B marketing. Uh, it also includes area countries, so you get a different perspective when you look at emerging markets like Bangladesh or Sri Lanka and how loyalty is evolving in those countries. Um, and I also, um, you know, look after bank partnership marketing. So having said that, um, you know, the idea is that uh, as you go to different organizations, different countries, different verticals, whether B2B, B2C, eventually the mode through which you drive loyalty might change, the actions might change. Uh, but end of the day, it's about uh, developing some real authentic connections with your consumers. And that's what the end objective, um, I think, on the loyalty side for marketing for my team and myself is. Hi, this is Manmeet Vora. I head the marketing and category for Tata Starbucks in India. Um, so Starbucks launched its loyalty program called My Starbucks Rewards uh, in India about two years ago. Uh, Starbucks has been in the market for about four years, to, so to have a loyalty program within two years of its launch was by itself a great achievement. And in over two years uh, of the program uh, launch in India, we've managed to have over 200,000 members already. Uh, so that uh, has been a great welcome that we have got from our customers uh, for our loyalty program. For us, uh, the challenge is constantly, you know, to keep our customers, to keep our loyal customers engaged, how we continue to build the right emotional connection with them for the brand day on day, and uh, to make them feel that they are special. Uh, because this program is quite an aspirational program, and what differentiates it is that it's a, a closed loop card. It's a closed loop program, so which means that we really need to find, we need to convince our customers to find place in their wallets for yet another physical card. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, something uh, which we constantly work towards. And uh, at Starbucks, we say that, you know, we are not in the business of transactions. We are in the business of creating special moments for our customers. And my Starbucks Rewards globally is actually a great uh, pillar uh, for creating that experience. Hi, everyone. This is, uh, this is Anish Khadia. I head marketing strategy for Mintra. 
loyalty for us in the e-commerce space is you know still a is still quite a native concept right we you know thus far our interactions with consumers have been very very transactional and therefore as we are thinking about loyalty we think about the entire funnel from engagement to purchase to advocacy so you know that that is where we are in the journey incidentally we don't yet have a program for loyalty but it is it is one of one of one of the most important things for all of us at mintra thank you anish so i think before uh, we, we move further uh, a lot of you here are really seriously focused loyalty practitioners or uh, marketing focused folks who are really interested in understanding how consumer behavior and loyalty program and rewards associated with the loyalty program how does it all come together and play out before we go deeper into talking about specifically the role of rewards i'd like to try and uh, uh, get the panel to talk a little bit about how the industry has been evolving how uh, uh, i have been a loyalty focused professional for now close to 12 14 years and uh, i have seen the industry evolving in a very dramatic fashion from the days when i could count in my fingers how many loyalty programs were there in this country to uh, not only just the sheer number of programs the variations and different techniques that organizations are employing towards consumer loyalty so clearly as the consumerism is taking uh, 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 speed in this country the the concept called consumer loyalty and and the competition amongst the brands and the data associated with the loyalty all of that is really really becoming more and more important so i'm going to request the panel uh, in this order to talk a little bit about how they have seen the industry evolving and i'd like to start with uh, arnika because arnika has perhaps seen it for a very very long period of time and then i'd like to go to manmeet because you you mentioned that uh, starbucks specifically has been here for 4 years but the loyalty program has been in the play for 2 years so we'd like to hear from you post arnika and then uh, anish and uh, and you are an organization interestingly very young the e-commerce industry itself is young and in many ways still figuring out the ropes of consumer handle consumer loyalty and you don't yet have a loyalty program yeah. so how is the thoughts evolving within the organization towards warming up to a loyalty program and it has a role to the evolving country as well right and lastly karthik if you could sum up all of this from india's largest credit card issuer and how the loyalty has been playing out for you within the bank so arnika would you like to start yeah so um, you know i have seen three trends uh, clearly emerge out of it the first trend if i may say is you know when we started out it was from for lack of better word a programmatic loyalty which used to run on you know a two dimensional measure on one measure was what is the benefit you are giving to the customer and the other access was what is the cost or benefit or roi to uh, loyalty becoming more strategic and mainstream uh, where you are trying to evolve and develop not even a relationship but a kinship with the customer you know pretty much like the customer becomes your relative so i think that's the trend which we are seeing over a period of time uh, which is evolving in more and more brands Uh, the second trend that i have seen observe is that more than the reward the experience of the reward is becoming much more critical and you know we've done a lot of global studies we did it in india as well and we realized that lot and lot of consumers are saying that being feeling practical and efficient is a higher driver of reward satisfaction for them than feeling happy and delighted and which is very counterintuitive because your initial thought is that you want to give the best reward to the customer but it's actually the experience which is becoming more and more important for the consumers and i think the third trend which i feel is also about um, what was touched upon in the previous session which i saw briefly is to being present where your customers are i mean your consumers are busy in a hyper connected world they don't have time so you need to make yourself um, you know a space in their daily routines and for that it is important whether it's about having a mobile first approach um, you know to be present where the customers are we are actually utilizing social as channels because uh, facebook and twitter is where your customers will be present um, you know uh, to even very very um, you know simple thing that Uh, are you actually reaching out to the customer where they need you uh, so for example if if we run a launch program 
and we uh, talk about a free lounge access to somebody on a you know on a Saturday it doesn't does, doesn't make a difference, right? But if somebody does a transaction or a swipe at an airport and I'm able to communicate that you know you are um, you are actually eligible for a free lounge access, that's where I think um, you know where we need to be present. So th these are the clear trends that we have seen. I have seen over the last three years, few years. So, um, as I mentioned that uh, the Starbucks uh, loyalty program is a closed loop program, which means that it runs on the basis of a prepaid card. Uh, while today it's not really difficult to convince cash users to go on to uh, digital payment systems, uh, but two years ago it was. So, but even then, you know, so uh, we have seen our uh, uh, share of uh, sales through, the, through this particular card um, you know, go up as high as 30% in certain times of the year. On an average, we do about 25% of our sales through the loyalty card program. And uh, that has been, uh, you know, uh, going consistently and uh, it's good for the health of the program. Now the thing, is, when we're talking about, uh, you know, a product like coffee, uh, I feel that, you know, um, that it is very difficult or unfair to isolate the customer service and experience aspect from the loyalty rewards. I think both have to go hand in hand. Uh, we did a recent survey with our loyalty card customers and uh, we realized that the ones on the basic levels of welcome and green came to Starbucks primarily for the coffee and that was the number one reason. Number two reason was the connection that they felt with our store staff and the store partners. But the number one reason for the gold card members, which is the highest level, was the customer service and the connection and the sense of recognition that they get from our store staff. Um, our store staff actually in Starbucks is uh, called, uh, they are all called partners, and that's in line with the values and beliefs and the culture of the company. So we have clearly noticed that, that people come to Starbucks for the coffee, stay for the warmth, but come back for that human connection. So all these factors have to go hand in hand. Then, uh, uh, you know, over the past couple of years, we have also, uh, what we have done is we have set regular round tables with our loyalty card members at various levels to understand that what, uh, you know, what do they find aspirational about the program, what keeps them engaged, and we have actually taken certain insights from them to develop special benefits. While globally, the soul of the program, the essence of the program is the same, but at a country level, we do, uh, you know, uh, maintain certain flexibility to suit the requirements, the expectations of the customers locally, while staying true to the values of the, uh, the program globally. Can you tell us some of those customizations that you might have done in India specifically, which is different from your global features? Yeah, so actually it's a great time to talk about it because uh, it's Christmas. And uh, we started with this particular, uh, we activated this insight in last Christmas and we saw it was hugely successful. So globally, uh, Christmas, uh, so Starbucks comes up with these collectibles around Christmas, which are the Christmas ornaments, which are in the shape of the red and white cups of Christmas that you see. Um, and there's also, uh, you know, uh, there's certain, uh, what has been really, really endearing is the, uh, you know, the love that this Starbucks barista bear receives every year. So it's, it's like a teddy wearing an apron and all of that. Uh, so what we did, so while globally you can buy these things off the shelf, uh, so last year we had a round table with our gold card members and they said that no, you know, all these benefits you're giving is great, but do something more, do something more just for us. So we said, okay, fine, we were the only market in the world to make these collectibles uh, available only to the My Starbucks Rewards members and they were not available for sale. And this particular, uh, you know, insight execution, this got us an amazing response in Christmas last year. Uh, our sales contribution from the uh, MSR program went up. We saw a lot of new people enroll into the program only to get these collectibles. Um, there was, uh, you know, the barista bear was always in high demand. In fact, we had, we saw a few cases of, uh, you know, people in corporate offices, groups of uh, friends, combining their spends to get that barista bear and saying that, okay, one week I'm going to keep it and then the next week you keep it on your desk. 
you know so that was the kind of uh, you know a reception that we got it's a small simple insight but uh, because again you know we talked about the emotional connection these are things that really build that emotional connection and make the customers feel that yes they are being valued and listened uh, so this year we have brought back the same uh, program for our christmas collectibles and it's gone to a uh, gone off to a great start already thank you manmeet uh, so you actually differentiated uh, your your loyalty program members from the rest by actually saying that some things are available only for loyalty program members yes absolutely that's, that's and that that was clearly something which consumers responded to well yeah and we got a huge jump in registrations of our program uh, we saw that the frequency of our loyalty card members increased because you had to uh, even though you are a loyalty card member you had to consider uh, you had to complete a certain level of spends to be eligible to redeem those special rewards wonderful thank you manmeet uh, anish we really keen to understand given that you come from uh, the extremely dynamic and fast changing e-commerce world i uh, really you know if you can give us an insider's view on how you guys are thinking about consumer loyalty it's a tough one to think in your world uh, and and how a uh, loyalty program or an incentive scheme how would that play out for an e-commerce player like uh, mintra so i think uh, first things first as an outsider you know who's kind of getting into the loyalty world the two things that have jumped out at us right is increasingly rewards are becoming a baseline right they are the bare minimum expectation any consumer has out of uh, out of a loyalty program and out of you know out of any person trying to sell to them right that that's part one what is increasingly becoming important to the consumer is the is the experience element the service element and that's you know that's you know that's something that we see even with amazon prime or flipkart first right where the entire program structured around the services that we bring to the consumer so it's no longer about the product but about the services i think there is a third step which one increasingly sees right uh, which is about exclusivity so the consumers that we interact with day to day are consumers who like to be pampered right who like to be who like to feel privileged and therefore bringing in some element of exclusivity i think which is probably echoed even in the starbucks experience is critical so that these are the three parts that we see however uh, do see that in the retail world right or in the online retail world it's becoming a bunch of very similar programs and therefore to that extent the way we see it as we are thinking about loyalty we have to differentiate the program and take it to the next level and and to give you one example right uh, now each brand partner that we have today the puma the nike's the bibas of the world everyone has their own loyalty program you know which runs with their offline stores right while the key for each loyalty program is the mobile number but they are they are desperate uh, desperate loyalty programs what if we were able to create one that you know that represented that allowed a consumer access to all of the brands i think i think that is will mix online and offline there yeah an omni channel loyalty program a multi partner loyalty program right so we are thinking about those dimensions as well i think that is where we will start to see uh, some element of differentiation i think markets come forward quite a bit however now there are a bunch of bunch of very similar programs wonderful anish i can see the loyalty industry evolving just sitting in this room right in front of us actually with uh, innovative thoughts like bringing together different organizations who have their own different pnl and different businesses but unified by a single brand and a single loyalty program so and that's just, perhaps a new way of thinking about a loyalty program altogether and and just one more point to add right i what i mean is not coalition programs like payback because they are essentially rewards programs right the element has or the core element has to be around the service can i buy a buy a garment on mintra and go get it altered in shopper stop or vice versa right so a little bit of little bit of that is what we see play out in the market wonderful i'll actually share a thought on this as well but before that uh, let me ask karthik uh, as uh, you know uh, in some way the bank that's walking the talk right uh, huge uh, a share in market leadership so how do you uh, from an hdfc bank consumer perspective how do you you see the evolving loyalty industry in india and you perhaps play a very important role in making that evolution happen given the market size that you guys have so can you sh sh share your thoughts sir, with us sir? 
Yeah, so before I get into, again, getting caught in the trap of linking loyalty to rewards and payoff, we quickly just say ki, what are the various, it's important for you know, all of you to <clears throat> be clear about what are the drivers for loyalty for your business, right? So they are, like even uh, my colleagues mentioned and Anish mentioned, the various drivers that drive loyalty. And loyalty, as I explained, is you should keep in your mind what is your customer life cycle you want to drive and achieve, right? And what objective you want to achieve at different stages of the life cycle. So you could be using various you know, drivers. One could be product. For example, you might say an Apple or a Google is something that the product is so brilliant that people just are loyal because of the, of the product itself without any having to you know, fall back on any uh, you know, uh, rewards. Second could be service. And we all would be looking at, let's say, Taj, for example, even while well, they have a rewards program. But you know that Taj is known for a stay service. Third could be price. So say Big Bazaar, for example, uh, or, uh, you know, or DMART, you'd go there because you know that the prices are going to be the lowest always. So they've built a loyalty curve. for primary driver would be you know, on price. It could also be on image or repetition. For example, when we look at, it's not a loyalty program, but our managed customers, we, you know, we have Impedia, Preferred, and Classic programs. Uh, uh, when we ask them what makes them loyal to the bank, the key and the program, the key driver comes out to be more image-led and reputation and the exclusivity of being part of the program. And finally, I would say would be you know the, the conventional rewards the way we look at it, where there's rewards, offers, benefits, and a bundle of uh, what I would call you know uh, payoffs uh, that the customer associates uh, customer associates uh, 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 by uh, by linking and being with the brand over a period of time. So within that context, if you see what are in the, on the cards portfolio, so the cards, yes, while we have a bunch of, we have a range of cards that covers the various customer segments, right from uh, the entry level cards till the high end cards and across functionality in terms of you know, uh, cash back cards versus uh, the top end you know, Infinia or travel cards. Uh, yes, so the cards industry really has been you know, caught up in this uh, treadmill of making sure that the, I mean, your, your, your Table stakes has to be a rewards point program, right? So that's all of us know about that. But uh, it's important to also understand that the rewards can be monetary or non-monetary, right? And you can charge customers or need not charge customers. So for instance, the points program typically obviously is a monetary program. There's no, you know, typically there's no charge because most people wave off the annual fee. And it comes with as part of the product. But you may also have non-monetary benefits that people also, you know, are, uh, that segment might would be uh, attracted to. So if you have uh, lounge access for the travel cards or top-end cards, or you have access to golf programs, or, you know, to, uh, or it could be for, a, for, for the, uh, it could be access to you know, movie tickets and so on. So different segments, it's a combination of uh, just the, the rewards as well as the, the non-monetary benefits. And you're clearly seeing the impact of those two. So keep in mind, uh, again, conventional marketing, there's a rational benefit and an emotional benefit. And you know, the emotional benefit of being able to walk into an airport and be access the lounge is very, very powerful as well. And quite a few people actually look at the card and say, okay, I want to be able to access the lounge. And of course, the reward points comes along with it. And then, so that's what we have to be clear about the driver of the program and what are the elements of it. Uh, at the back of that is a very strong um, uh, uh, data-led, analytical-led approach uh, to drive the objectives of of, of, you know, from, the, from the bank's point of view. So while we as a bank would have an overall um, you know, I would say customer life cycle across all our banking products, which I mentioned to you earlier, within that, there would be a product life cycle as well. So I'm looking at the you know, my customer being, having an account with us and all the products uh, of the bank, of which within which there'll be a cards product as well. And then within cards, of course, we have a lot of analytics and data to be able to drive customers, right, from acquisition to activation and increasing usage, and obviously get the family in and you know, prevent churn, right? So that, that's, the, again, the life cycle. Um, and one, what works often is using the points as a currency to drive behavior, right? So if you have multipliers of reward points, those could be defined on the weekends over certain categories of spends, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Or if people are inactive, only to that segment, you offer a particular benefit that based on frequency of usage or hitting certain levels of usage, the reward points become a currency to drive, drive behavior. Does so, that work really when you do a multiplier? Yes, it does. So all our, it does, and it's important again, uh, since, again, going back to the audience, since it's important for you to, you know, uh, while yes, there could be funding and you might be able to spend a lot of money, but you need to have that discipline of, uh, of an ROI mentality and, and watching the p &L, right? So every campaign that we do, is each and every campaign that we do is tracked for ROI in terms of cost to incremental benefit. 
and these you know campaigns do work well then as again analytically based segmented and uh, targeted wonderful thank you kartik so in general what we are really hearing us uh, uh, like uh, like how arnika started off saying uh, programmatic to moving on to relationship and then it's more than relationship it's almost kinship and and uh, manmeet talked about even their goal members saying why do they keep coming back what do they value the most they didn't say that it's the points that uh, they said that it's the recognition that the service uh, so essentially largely from the panel what we are hearing is uh, yes loyalty program is there but you know your product needs to be good and the consumers need to be recognized through a loyalty program and you know before we move on to talk a little more in detail about the rewards itself and the relevance how what role what specific role uh, uh, do rewards play i want to share with you a, an interesting research that we originally came across that was done in the us and uh, in india we did uh, uh, survey slash research uh, across different loyalty programs that we run uh, to understand what is it that consumers specifically value and it's a question that i often get as a loyalty professional and that's something which we asked as well as uh, does just this one or two loyalty points per 100 rupees that different brands give you does that really manage to swing your loyalty or is there anything more so the us research actually said that consumers like thanks for all the discounts and points and all of that but can i trust you that was the punch line of that of that research in the us and we it resonated in the indian surveys that that we did as well essentially consumers saying that loyalty points and the monetary benefits and all of that is important and i'd like it but more than anything else i'd like to be recognized as an individual i'd like to know that the organization that i'm giving my business to they know me and they value me as an individual it's not just about giving 1% or half a percent back in the form of loyalty points so that's where it all sort of comes back to what karthik said in the end that the key role analytics play in in any any mass program you can't sort of individually recognize everyone but analytics play an extremely critical role in understanding each consumer's behavior and your as marketers you are being able to give each consumer what he or she wants which makes them completely go bonkers saying that this company knows me and that's what we are all hearing on in this panel as well but having said that i would still like to dig a little deeper into the rewards aspect of loyalty program and more specifically have you seen that evolving is it just about loyalty points or is experience the new reward or recognition the new reward is is you said that the the monetary reward is the baseline uh, is it still a critical baseline which need to be there do consumers care so i'd like to hear a little bit maybe i'd start with manmeet uh, specifically on the role that rewards play your gold card members they said that recognition is important but you also reward them pretty well so wh what do you think is the reward uh, the role of reward in the overall loyalty play so um so our program actually so there is no cross earn and burn in the starbucks rewards program so you spend through the starbucks uh, card whatever rewards you get you have to uh, you know they relate to consumption within starbucks so for different levels whether it's welcome green or gold they could range from size upgrades on your beverage to free customizations uh, to special trials for a new beverage that we are launching um uh, so if you buy a whole bean coffee you get uh, a beverage along with it um and for gold card members there are special previews uh to various new offerings there is like so if we do a uh, a special discount on uh, let's say our merchandise so there is an extra x percent off for the gold card members and these are things so there are certain rewards that are defined uh in the typical program brochure but there are certain rewards that are actually dynamically added um as we go along depending on you know what is it that we are focusing on in terms of the promotion but um, what is really uh, you know uh, different is that all your redemption is within the world of starbucks so i think um, what i can probably say is uh, you know whatever happens in starbucks stays in starbucks <laughs> so <laughs> sorry 
So yeah, you know, but that's typically, you know, how the Starbucks Rewards program. So a lot of opportunities within the program to get the customer closer to the brand, to build that connection day on day uh, with the engagement. And that is where the focus is actually. So because, and, uh, and again, I mean, it could be exciting as well as challenging because you have to keep offering innovative ways to keep the customer engaged within the world of Starbucks through the loyalty program. Uh, so we also, you mentioned about analytics. So that is again, I mean, you know, very important area for us as well. Uh, again, but we try to use our analytics, of course, for tactical measures as well, but also areas of surprise and delight. So, uh, you know, so if we know that there are certain number of uh, our members who transact uh, only in the morning, you know, um, and typically around our corporate stores who go there for the morning coffee. So sometimes, you know, we offer only those members a special offer and bonus stars. And when they receive communication like this, you know, they are obviously surprised and delighted. One of the things that we have noticed is that our communication has, I think, probably one of the highest open rates in the industry. Our uh, emailers have open rates of as high as 43%. I think the lowest we would have ever gone is like 21%. Uh, so never lower than that. And when we uh, constantly engage and talk to our uh, uh, program members, they actually say, told us that they look forward to receiving communication. I mean, who does that anymore, right? Of uh, Getting so many emails and SMSs. They said, but we look forward to it because we know that there will be something in it for us. Manmit, but if in, in this whole gamut of activities that you do around the rewards program, recognition, special, you know, kick up, larger size, etc. But do you think it would still work if you take out the, the, for the lack of any other word, bribe, right? If you don't give anything back free, but you give exclusivity in terms of buying special gifts only for gold members, do you think it would still work or consumers would still insist on getting something free first and foremost? Um, I think every customer expects some uh, additional uh, tangible value uh, which they can see and appreciate. Uh, uh, you know, every customer expects a reward for their loyalty. But again, I said, uh, but like I said, you know, for us, it's a very fine line between that customer connection and the reward. So I don't think they're going to care about the size upgrade or the free beverage for every X number of stars if the connection or the service levels were not maintained um, you know, at our stores. And we have seen this consistently across the world. Uh, you know, and and you know, I'm sure a lot of you here are Starbucks customers. You would have experienced the differentiation in services uh, of you know, the way our store partners are trained to interact with our customers and the way uh, you know, they sometimes go out of their way. Uh, so I was actually, uh, you know, um, at, uh, at one of the IM campuses last month, and there a student asked me that, you know, he's like, what really amazes me is that um, how uh, your Starbucks uh, staff goes out of their way to do things. Do they even have the authority to do that? And he cited one example where the store was like, you know, past his closing time at night, and he was like, please, please, can I please have like one Frappuccino or something like that? And then uh, the post was closed, everything. So the partner said, uh, one of the partners and came out, and he was not even a store manager. He came out, he said, okay, for, you know what? Um, I can't open up the system, but here, I'll give you from my free quota for today. So take mine and go home. And you know, so that is now, again, I mean, and that just won us a customer for life. And he said, how do you do that? You know, so I mean, there's a huge difference between, you know, um, I, I would say it's like, a sense of empowerment, but also the brand, you know, going beyond to surprise and delight your customers, which is actually has to be, uh, you know, uh, you have to be mindful of that that is the brand DNA. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Manmeet. Arnika, I wanted to ask you, uh, membership rewards, American Express mem membership rewards, most of us would know this, that if there is one loyalty program that sort of stands up globally, not just in any one market, uh, globally as an epitome of a successful loyalty program, which has stood the test of time and, and been there for a long time, that's, that's uh, Amex's membership rewards. And uh, Arnika incidentally mentioned that you launched that in India yep. so many years back. I, I myself remember looking at those brochures where you could redeem American Express membership reward points, it's called MR points, right? 
for for a Porsche or for an Alfa Romeo and thinking who gets that but it's still so attractive and makes that program so powerful so uh, membership reward continues to be a very strong uh, rewarding program besides the analytics and the relationship and the recognition it's still a very strong rewarding program uh, yet uh, I also noticed that uh, Amex in between in India went ahead and offered uh, another currency I mint or payback at payback perhaps which I thought was a strategically a different move from many other ma markets in India so can you share with us a little bit on how you've seen the rewards uh, uh, playing out in the Indian market and how important the actual rewarding is to the consumer besides the uh, 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 the other recognition tools that you have. Okay, so I think uh, first let me start and say Payback is a different organization at, at arm's length with American Express. We have a strategic interest but that's about it. Uh, for American Express, uh, I think membership rewards is core to our DNA. Whether uh, when we give the incentive when you take the card to actually incentivizing you on displaying various behaviors during your customer life cycle. Uh, even simple thing like, you know, moving from a paper statement to a paperless, you know, you incentivize customers um, in the form of membership rewards program. The program when it started in India, if you will recall those days, was more around airline, free, airline frequent flyer miles because that's what, what the consumers wanted at that point in time. But over a period of time, a lot of things have changed. Um, you know, globally we have our own what we call internally a virtual retailer platform, which is pretty much like any e-commerce site. You can choose your reward and add it to a cart. You can choose your reward and add it to a wish list, and we can keep telling you how closer you are in terms of your points to redeem that. Uh, we also started uh, with pay with points, and pay with points when we launched it with uh, leading brands like Apple or even you know online. We it was actually priced. 25% lower than what regular rewards are. Uh, purely if you do the maths, it wasn't that attractive, but we see now close to 50% of our uh, points getting redeemed on pay with points. And you know, one of the interesting insights came from one of our uh, very premium card member who actually said that, uh, you know, it's okay if you give me a Jimmy Choo voucher for my wife's birthday, but that takes a while for me to reach. I just used it at the store and I was able to just redeem my points and surprise and delight. And, you know, my wife could use her card because supplementary card members can also do that. Um, so, you know, as the consumer um, uh, behavior is evolving and to my earlier point of where the customers are going, we are trying to ensure that the loyalty program is embracing that. Um, very soon next year in India, we'll launch uh, uh, what we call uh, recommended for you or personalization. So if you go on to the membership reward side, basis your, um, you know, your demographic profile, your browsing history, your, um, you know, a cohort analysis that we do, keyword searching, we will be able to actually populate that <clears throat> probably you bought an Apple product two months back and you might be looking for an accessory and you have enough points to redeem for that accessory. And I think uh, that recommender engine will just take it to the next level uh, to bring it to an experience where the customer actually will start thinking, oh, how do you know that I might be interested in that accessory? And then typically surprise and delight, delight the customer. Thank you, uh, Arnika. Uh, Anish, you, uh, you know, you can, if you can share with us, uh, you are in the process of creating this new innovative model and perhaps thinking about loyalty internally. But in, in doing so, how much uh, uh, importance do you place on understanding the consumer and, you know, and specifically being able to tailor something very specific for the consumer vis-a-vis -vis, uh, actually giving something back. Discounts are something which uh, uh, e-commerce companies do anyway and that's something which is standard and expected these days. So how do you load a loyalty program on top of that? That will be a hard task. So, so great question. Uh, I think, uh, you know, to start with, we are already, uh, you know, on the way when it comes to personalizing the loyalty experience or personalizing the experience for each of our consumers. So Mintra consumers today, the, you know, when you open the Mintra app, the homepage that Vijay, you and I would see would be different. And that's typically because, you know, you might, you might be interested in suits and trousers, whereas I may be interested in uh, t-shirts and, you know, denims. So therefore, I think the world where, uh, you know, where we give a customized experience to each consumer is already here. Uh, you know, we, we've gone through this journey over the last 12 months. The kind of click-throughs that we see, typically on banners and on feed posts, 
are you know have improved order of magnitude by at least two to three x, right? So to that extent, you know, picking on what Arnika said, I think as we think about the loyalty program, we are thinking about how do we create a program that's customized to each individual's taste, right? Or how do we create a redeem redemption catalog, which is you know which is what the customer wants and not a you know not a blanket catalog. I think so. That's one part. Uh, the other part uh, about how do we solve for all of this while you know while you know while the core proposition tends to remain discounts i think discounts as a reward currency is true for our industry but increasingly we are trying to move away from it part of that journey is through personalization part through experience i think there is there is a third element to all of it where we are trying to also redefine how we incentivize the consumers what i mean by that is instead of purchase which is the typical uh, which is the typical reward behavior right or typical behavior that one's rewarded for we are increasingly trying to move away from that and move towards engagement as the behavior to reward right so how often do you visit my app how often do you you know go to a list page and see a product uh, again the thesis that we have there is uh, ours is an impulse category fashions very very you know in the moment type uh, you know type of uh, a category and therefore we want to reward that and if we are able to reward that right and get the consumer to the right kind of page we'll be away, we'll be able to move them away from discounts so a little bit of it is personalization combined with uh, combined with engagement is how we plan to move away from discounts and you know that probably will be how you know how our loyalty program will get structured one interesting thing that you mentioned is how you plan to redefine how you incentivize and uh, it's more than just a, a business transaction it's also engagement that you're looking to reward so there are new ways of uh, uh, getting uh, uh, consumers to react in the way you want them to rather than just the standard cookie cutter of a loyalty program so thank you anish uh, karthik coming to you uh, Credit cards tra traditionally always had uh, reward points. However, uh, HDFCs uh, also, and most of the credit cards generally have a segmented approach, right? You, you segment your customer base and reward different segments differently. To that extent, perhaps you create a, a travel segment and give them specific to air miles. There is another, another segment where something else. So rewards perhaps play a very key and direct role in that. Uh, of course, coupled with analytics and everything else. Can you share with us a little more on how you do that internally? Okay. Specific role that rewards play, perhaps for different segments. Okay. Uh, let me take that question a bit differently. So, I mean, the, the standard answer to what you're saying is, yes, how do I um, define my customer segments, see what their uh, interests or behavior is, and how do I map what I have on offer? to that customer to drive a certain behavior, right? But what we are also working on is, and the message to the audience here is, you know, when you look at uh, leveraging your reward programs or your loyalty, also look at leveraging your strengths. And they differ for different you know, organizations. For example, what is our strength? Our strength is that we have a large credit card base, we have a large customer base, we have a lot of data about the customer and their spending behavior and their preferences. We, because of that customer base, I'm able to go and talk to merchants and partners and get special, specific benefits or you know, discounts or offers for my customers. Right? So those are my two strengths. I have an internal strength and I have an external. Therefore, I can leverage that to get uh, you know, good offers for my customers. And we have scores of merchant offers. Now, the challenge here is how do I match the offer to the customer need? I'm working on that right now. So I'm not talking of the rewards points per se, but the benefit I get to my customer. For example, a simple thing would be, let's say, you know, when a new phone, I, phone, phone gets launched, we have a discount off a running. So recently, Google, Pips, Google Pixel, you could get to be 7,000 rupees off on that cost on a Flipkart, right? And so on and so forth. Or Dynos has, yeah? Yeah, I use that as well, too. So anyway, so there's a whole range of offers across electronics, dining, travel. So how do I map these two? So what we're working on currently is that being able to, A, use analytics to dr and identify customers segments, behavior, preferences across the various spend categories, be it travel, movies, entertainment, dining, shopping, and what have you, you know, and map that, look at all the offers you have from various merchants and map the two. Now, uh, that involves a analytics over here and being able to offer a platform where customers can discover the offers. So there are two ways. One is I do push 
So based on either through email or through a locational real-time, locational uh, geo-targeting when you're on the mobile and give you an offer relevant to you in that catchment, or offering, let's say for you, while you may have simple search tools, but can I offer you an offer chatbot, where you can actually simply, uh, various ways for you to search for the offer, whether through a chatbot or through Messenger or through a simple, uh, let's say a tweet, for example. So that to me is one area that is uh, what we're working on, which is the next level of uh, benefit for our customers. Being able to A, leverage the strengths, match the two constituents, the customers and the offer, and then being able to build a pl platform that allows customers to in a very simple way, discover the offer when they need it. So for example, you know, when you are on the e-commerce site, you want to know, okay, does is an offer on my HDFC bank card on Make Matter? Or if you're in a particular restaurant, can I get a discount on my, let's say, Regalia card in, uh, in Indigo Delhi? So that's the key thing you need to uh, work on. Thank you. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, also from a, uh, I was thinking from a bank's perspective, uh, perhaps there are some segments where rewards play a very, very key role because often enough you create a new card entirely focused on rewards alone. Right. So to that extent, it's wonderful that you, you can actually see a segment of your consumers who are, uh, for example, air travelers and you will create a card product targeting that consumer segment and how is that card differentiated from the rest by the rewards. So to that extent, in, in that case, it plays a very, very key role, right? right. So uh, I just wanted to ask any one of you in the panel, throwing it open, that uh, from your past experience, is there any interesting uh, innovative rewards that you can share with which has worked for you? Anything innovative from a rewarding perspective? Not, I understand the analytics and recognition and service and product quality, but specifically from a rewards perspective, any innovative rewards that you've done to your consumer base that got fabulous response? Any one of you? Yeah, I mean, um, I can just add that, uh, you know, you saw those Porsche and cars on the catalog, they actually got redeemed as well. So the key thing is that never underestimate the power of your consumer. Sometimes you go with a single stroke approach to say, oh, you know, this won't work. But sometimes people just surprise you, um, you know, in, in, in terms of that. So for us, for example, there's a wide spectrum from a very super premium customer to an entry level customer. And ensuring to give rewards for them that works, um, you know, it, it does really well. The other thing that did very well for us is the movie tickets program that we did. Uh, whether you are a black card customer or an entry level customer, you end up watching movie in the same theater, probably on the same seats, and everybody loves free movies in India. So, you know, clearly if you make a very simple, easy to understand, um, easy to achieve, and a very transparent program, then there is definitely a very high engagement you can drive with your customers. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I think it's a wonderful panel uh, discussion. Thank you so much.